very much to say for some I haven't given the wrong information before. I said that we would have a short break, but it's not according to the truth. I hope you'll forgive me for putting the next. Uh, because we will go straight on to the questions. I will invite the first question to come to the microphone. Thank you. Uh, let me present myself as a pastor, Arne Kappelgaard, and I'm thankful for the fair way that you try to open the discussion. Although I could, I would like to have uh, heard you understand the context in so many of these places, I will not go into many details, just one. Have you not heard this context of the word, I and the Father is one, that Jesus called and uh, talked to the Jews, try to explain them step by step slowly what he is trying to tell them, because it was so, just as hard for Jews to understand that what he was trying to tell about himself, as it is for you. Because God is one. It took his disciples two and a half years to understand that at the same time he could say, I am both. I am also God, although I am a man. He was human, yes, and God. And when he said, I and the Father is one, the Jews stoned him, wanted to stone him at least. They understood perfectly well that he made claim to be God with these words, just as he did with the words, before Abraham was, I am. Have you not heard this context before? That is actually what I was referring to. You see, the Christian, to me, is reading out of context. What you have given me is the text. John chapter 10, verse 30. That is the text. Context means, please don't waste time. Context means the text that goes with it, before or after. And I have been asking learned Christians, what is the context? English speaking people, what is the context? And nobody seems to understand that simple English of mine. I said, what you quoted is the text. I want a text that goes with it. So they want to open the book. I said, no, no, no. The book if you know your, what you are talking about, then you ought to know what the context is. What is the context? You know, sir, look, I don't want to embarrass you, because I know people get embarrassed. I said, what is the context, the, the text that goes with it? Without opening the book as a pastor, sir, you might remember in what sense did he say that. In the sense that he was gradually revealing himself, this was so, what was so hard to understand. Some people they accepted, some rejected and got angry because they understood. And nobody can say, I and the Father is one, without being either a fool or be true. You see, sir, what you are doing now, you are giving explanation. What I was asking for is the context. Let me give you what I, what I, I said what I mean. Context, starting from verse 23. What you put in verse 30, let's start from 23. That's a context. It reads, and Jesus, if you like to open the book, if you like to have a look at it, 23. And Jesus walked in Solomon's porch. John 10, 
23. And Jesus walked in Solomon's porch, meaning in the temple of Jerusalem. He walked in. He's alone. Jesus, not with his disciples, he's alone. Then came the Jews round about him, meaning they surrounded him. Because this man, Jesus, a mighty messenger of God, he was provoked by the Jews, and he, he, he criticized them very, very strongly. He said, you generation of vipers, you white acceptors, you fools, you wicked and adulterous generation, you brood of snakes. You are not the people to forgive you for that. Do you know that they are un uh, unforgiving people? So now they have their own time. They have an opportunity. They have an opportunity. But here is a man, he's alone, let's give him a good bashing. You know he's going to his name. So they surround him and they say, How long does that make us without? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Am I right, sir? How long? That means that brandishing a finger in, the, in his face, he says, How long are you going to make us without? If you are a Christ, tell us plainly, man. In other words, you are talking ambiguously. You are not putting for your claim clear enough. That's the allegation, the charge. So Jesus says, I told you, and you believe not. It's a lie. You are uttering a lie against me that I didn't tell you. I told you, and you believe not. The words that I did in my father's name, they be witness of me. And my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. My husband is. My father is greater than me, is greater than, than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Verse 29, verse 30, I am the father of one. That is the point. Meaning that once a person has accepted faith, God sees to it that he remains in faith. And I, as a teacher, as a master, I see to it that they remain in faith. We are both one in this to see that the man remains in faith. Not in omnipotence, not in omniscience, but he is the Christian. We are one in this to see that the man remains in faith. But the Jews were looking for trouble. Look, they were out for a fight. And they were saying that if you're looking for trouble, you don't have to go very far. You get it on the corner. Now that's it. You're looking for trouble, and before the, you can get three minutes of eye, you are in it. You are looking for trouble. So the Jews were looking for trouble. So they picked up stones again to stone. Verse 31. So Jesus said, Many good words have I told you from my father, for which of those words will you stone me? So they say, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because the thou being a man maketh themselves a God. 